Well, hey guys, I'm a board certified dermatologist and in this video, we're gonna be going over eight signs of polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. This is a pretty common condition that affects women of reproductive age. It's characterized by elevated levels of the male hormones androgens, as well as irregular periods. And in some cases, the ovaries can become enlarged and cystic, hence the name polycystic ovary syndrome. And women who deal with PCOS many times have high levels of the hormone insulin. This puts them at risk for a variety of health problems. And a lot of the signs of PCOS that I'm gonna be covering in today's video have to do with high levels of insulin and high levels of androgens. Now, to be clear, the signs I'm gonna cover in today's video, they're not specific for PCOS. So if you have any of these, it doesn't mean that you have PCOS. Number one is severe inflammatory acne. People with PCOS often deal with really stubborn acne that often affects the lower face, like the jawline, the chin, as well as the neck and the upper chest. This likely has to do with elevations in those androgen hormones because your pores have receptors for those androgen hormones. And when the androgens bind there, it leads to enlargement in your oil gland and increased production of oil, which is part of why you get acne. And it also causes the lining of the pore, the cells that line the pore to kind of proliferate abnormally and get sticky and lead to plugging of the pores. And with all of that increase in oil or sebum, there's a little bacteria that lives in our pore called Cutibacterium acnes, and it kind of gets a little bit too comfortable and there is an inflammatory response. So you have pretty inflammatory, deep cystic, painful acne in PCOS. It is estimated that roughly 19 to 37% of adult women with severe inflammatory acne actually have PCOS. So it is a trigger to consider a diagnosis of PCOS in a woman, an adult woman who has acne that is new for the first time as an adult or acne that is really stubborn to typical treatments like benzoyl peroxide or retinoid. Now within your skin, there are actually enzymes that convert those male hormones to an even more potent form. And that is what leads to acne flares. And some people, regardless of having PCOS or not, they have enzyme activity in their skin that is more robust. And so there is a lot of person-to-person -person variability as far as this inflammatory acne. Number two, seborrhea. That is a medical term for oiliness. And I've kind of already described why you have oily skin when you have PCOS. It's because those hormones, those androgen hormones, they signal to the oil gland to increase in size and to increase oil output. And you know, you think about that with acne, which we already talked about, but there's another oily skin condition that's really common in PCOS called seborrheic dermatitis. And it's these patches of red oily skin with kind of an overlying yellow scaliness. And a variant of that affects the scalp and is called dandruff. So dandruff is actually seborrheic dermatitis. It's related to the oiliness of the scalp. And people with PCOS, they have more sebum, more oil production as a result of having those the increase in androgen hormones, seborrheic dermatitis. It can affect the face, like around your eyebrows, around your nose, like the corners of your mouth, even the forehead. And it also, again, can affect the scalp. Many people with PCOS, they describe their hair as very oily and always having an oily scalp. Oil production, a lot of people think there's a product that is causing the oiliness, but oil production, sebum production, it is governed by hormones. So people with PCOS, they have a strong hormonal input to their oil gland to make more oil. That is why they have a greasy scalp oftentimes um, and why they have greasier skin and are more prone to acne. Number three is hirsutism. What the heck is hirsutism? Hirsutism is a medical term that describes coarse terminal hair growth in a male pattern. So having hair growth on the chin, the chest, the neck, the back, the lower abdomen, and the areola around the nipple can be a sign of PCOS. The reason for that is that the hair follicles at these body sites 
are more sensitive to the male hormones, the androgens, which are elevated in many cases in people with PCOS. And that triggers those follicles to produce a coarse terminal hair as opposed to the typical peach fuzz, vellus hair that is ordinarily there. There is a lot of person to person variability in terms of the sensitivity of the hair follicles in that area to androgens, which we all have. So just because you have a few hairs here and there, it doesn't mean that you have PCOS. There are certain ethnicities who, perhaps due to genetic variant differences, are more likely to have terminal hair in this area and it not be related to PCOS. For example, people who are of South Asian descent are more likely to, to deal with this, whereas people who are of Japanese descent are less likely to, even if they have PCOS. So there is a lot of person-to-person -person variability and ethnicity, your ethnicity can certainly influence whether or not you have this. It has to do with the activity of that enzyme 5-alpha reductase. So some hair follicles and some body sites, they're gonna respond to androgens, they're gonna convert them to the more potent form, and that's gonna result in terminal hair growth, changing from a vellus hair to a terminal hair. Whereas hair follicles on other body sites, namely your scalp, respond to these androgens in the opposite way. And that is what brings me to the fourth sign of PCOS, and that is hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. Um, on the scalp, the hair follicles are sensitive to those androgens, and that enzyme 5-alpha reductase that converts the androgens to more potent form, it does that, and the, the result on like the scalp is that the follicles, instead of making coarse terminal hair, they convert to a little baby vellus hair, and that is why you have androgenetic alopecia or pattern hair loss. Now, a lot of women deal with this who do not have PCOS. Again, as the name implies, it has to do with both the androgens as well as a genetic tendency towards it, but women with PCOS are more likely to have androgenetic alopecia because Oftentimes they have elevated circulating androgen levels that their hair follicle on their head responds to by miniaturizing. They can present in one of two ways. One is a female pattern of hair loss in which the central part widens, but you have preservation of your frontal hairline. The second way is more of a male pattern of hair loss that women can develop in which you get receding of the temporal and frontal hair hairline with thinning of the vertex. That's what you typically see in men, but women can have that pattern as well. All right, up until this point, I've covered four signs. These signs are signs of PCOS that reflect androgen excess. But remember at the beginning of the video, I pointed out that people with PCOS also deal with high levels of the hormone insulin. And this puts them at risk for a variety of metabolic issues, diabetes, and there are several skin signs of high insulin. Probably one of the most common is a condition called acanthosis nigricans. I've covered this in a dedicated video, but to remind you, this is a skin finding where you have these thick, they're described as velvety. I honestly don't know why because they don't feel or look like velvet in my opinion, regardless. They're these thickened brown uh, areas of skin, most often on the sides of the neck, the nape of the neck. It can happen on the sides of the face, like on the backs of your hands. And commonly it happens in the armpits. You can also have this in the groin and it happens because those high levels of insulin bind to receptors on the skin cells and cause proliferation, meaning division and growth. And that results in thickening of the skin there. And these skin lesions, they're very stubborn to treatment. In some cases, if the insulin levels come under control through medication or lifestyle changes, then the acanthosis nigricans can improve. So acanthosis nigricans is seen in situations where you have hyperinsulinemia, which often goes along with having PCOS, and in many times there is obesity as well. So not all women who have PCOS are overweight or obese, but in many cases they are. And the obesity, actually, the fat stores, especially the abdominal fat, it actually kind of contributes to the disease further because, believe it or not, there is hormonal activity coming from the fat tissue itself. 
And so that kind of drives some of this. And then the insulin resistance piece of that is related as well to the obesity. So that further is what underscores having acanthosis nigricans. Along with being overweight or obese and having hyperinsulinemia and PCOS comes stretch marks. The medical term for this is striae distense. Why stretch marks form? It's thought to do to rapid expansion in the tissues, but in the case of PCOS and insulin resistance, is you know honestly not entirely understood why. Perhaps due to you know obesity and weight gain in adolescence and early adulthood. Number seven is another finding that goes along with hyperinsulinemia or high levels of that insulin hormone in PCOS: skin tags. A lot of skin tags. The medical term for skin tags are acrocordons. And a lot of times people with PCOS, hyperinsulinemia, and or obesity, they will have the acanthosis nigricans like in their armpits and they will have tons of these skin tags. The skin tags can also happen on the sides of the neck, um, on the chest, under the breast, anywhere where you have skin on skin contact and a lot of friction, these things can pop up. They're little soft bumps. Sometimes they're on a stalk. I have a whole video talking about how these are treated. So if you're dealing with a lot of them, check that video out. It is old, but the treatment is still the same. So I will link that down below in the description box for you, along with my video on acanthosis nigricans. But yeah, this is a really common finding in insulin resistance. Now, a lot of people develop these throughout their lifetime. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have, you know, you're gonna go on to, to develop diabetes or that you have PCOS, but it is really common in these groups and a common finding in, in people with PCOS. And then last but not least, it's not necessarily, you know, a sign per se of PCOS, but they often go together and they have many of the same overlapping issues like having high insulin levels, diabetes risks, many of the same chronic disease risks, and they often come along with one another. And that is a condition called hydradenitis suppurativa. I have, again, a video all about this condition, but it's basically these boils, for lack of a better word, that develop under the armpits, in the groin area, around the buttocks. They're really, really painful and they can form what's called sinus tracts that drain. I mean, it's really an unbearable condition to live with and it is closely linked with PCOS. Not everybody who has hydradenitis suppurativa has PCOS, but they are tightly linked. All right, you guys, so those are eight signs of PCOS. Now, obviously I'm a dermatologist, so I'm covering the skin signs of PCOS, but you know, to make a diagnosis of PCOS, it's going to involve blood work to rule out other things. It is largely a di it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So, you know, blood work has to be done to rule out other things like a thyroid abnormality, for example, other medical conditions, but there are a lot of medical diseases that people with PCOS are at increased risk for. I already mentioned type two diabetes because of the high levels of insulin. And because people with PCOS that have um, irregular periods, they have problems with ovulating, then they are obviously at risk then for fertility issues. And so that can definitely be a source of struggle and emotional distress for women who cope with PCOS. Now, if women with PCOS, they can get pregnant either um, with or without fertility treatments. And when they become pregnant, they are at increased risk for gestational diabetes, which is a type of diabetes that develops in pregnancy and it can go away after you deliver or it can persist after you deliver. And so you are you know, at an increased risk for that if you have PCOS. PCOS is also a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, likely because you have an, a risk of type two diabetes and high levels, you know, because of the high levels of insulin. And that goes along with having lipid abnormalities. If there's obesity, then, you know, that ties in, all of those things tie into a risk for heart disease. People with PCOS also are at risk for obstructive sleep apnea. So if you have this and you've been told by your partner or family member, uh, somebody who you know is around when you're asleep that you snore, uh, it, you know it could be something called sleep apnea, which basically is where you don't, you know, you have periods in your sleep where you don't get 
good oxygen and you, you kind of stop breathing, quite literally. If you have this, weight loss can help. Also, you may have to wear a device called a CPAP. Sleep apnea, it's no, it's no joke. It, it's actually, untreated sleep apnea is quite deadly. Uh, you can develop all sorts of chronic health problems from becoming, you know, not getting oxygen as you sleep, headaches, high, high blood pressure. Now, because PCOS, you have um, ovulatory dysfunction, your menstrual cycle is not normal. And a risk with that is an increased risk for endometrial cancer as well. Also add an increased risk for fatty liver and mental health problems. People with PCOS are at increased risk for psychiatric illness and depression and anxiety, for example. So as you can see, this is a disease where there are multiple consequences to your total body health. So there are a variety of treatments for PCOS that address some of the different issues. So I'm not gonna go too far into detail as to all the treatments. I do have a lot of videos on hormonal therapies, birth control pills for acne. I have a video on, I also have a video on hormonal hair loss treatments. I have videos on treatment of androgenetic alopecia. So I'm not gonna cover all of those in today's video, but there are a lot of treatments that we use for people with PCOS to control the skin manifestations and the hair loss, the hair growth. So there's definitely treatments out there. So those are the eight signs of PCOS. I hope this video was helpful to you all. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my video on the signs of diabetes, since a lot of people who have PCOS, you know, they have insulin resistance. So check that out. That's something that you're dealing with. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.